<clears throat> Hello. So I want to show you a drill, an exercise actually. This, uh, this is a drill. Um, I've already done this one, but it was really windy and it didn't. I don't think it came across very well because I was watching it today and it, <laughs> even I couldn't hear what was going on. And I think I learnt this one from Peter Hayes, or certainly I've adapted it from something I got from Peter Hayes. Um, <clears throat> And it's a, it's a pick up and lay down drill, which you probably may have learned if you've had a lesson, but you might have learned it at 30 feet. And this is not a 30 foot pick up and it's part of it, but that's, but that's not really what we're learning here. And I want to start off with just the leader. And <clears throat> the reason I want to do that, well, you'll see, there's a couple of reasons, there's a couple of things to think about here. And <clears throat> this is why I really like this drill. Firstly, whenever we cast, um, for example, in an overhead cast, there are always two targets. There's a target we're aiming for at front, and there's always a target behind us. And I talk about an imaginary bell, and we need to ring that bell. <clears throat> and it's 180 degrees away from the front target. Now, that front target might be the water surface, or it might be two feet above the water surface, and that will actually affect where we place our back target. The other thing about that is for a vertical overhead cast, that target is directly behind our shoulder. So if you were the front target, my uh, shoulder would be through the middle and my target, my back target, my bell would be up there in the sky, 180 degrees behind. And I not only think about casting to that target, I think about the fly hitting it. And that helps delay the, 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 my, the, the beginning of the forward stroke, it helps to get the timing right. So I think about the fly actually ringing that bell, it goes ping, and I'm waiting for that to happen. There can be some other things when we're doing during that at some point, but most of the time we're just waiting. The reason I start with just the leader is because I like to teach this block and flip, or this break and flip, um, and I use this exercise um, in order to train the, moment, the momentum transfer from the body to the, to the wrist, to the hand. And um, if you think about most of our casting, what a lot of the casting we're trying to achieve is we're trying to get momentum moving through the body. And then depending on what sort of stroke we're using, ultimately, we're stopping the forearm and we're allowing the wrist to flip. Now, in order to get that distinct breaking and, and flipping, I use this drill and I put a pause in between in order to learn this. And then ultimately we take the fours out and it, it, you should have a good, a good stroke then. And that's why I start with just the leader because for the leader to cast, we need a really nice flick from the wrist. Something else I should mention is there's a number of ways you can use your wrist. You've got ulnar and radial deviation, which is the wrist in this plane, and then you've got flexion and extension. I think for most casting that we do, flexion and extension is a better one, particularly if we are trying to, from a rela fairly relaxed wrist, move this momentum from the forearm or the body ultimately to this wrist. And if it's like this, it's quite, it's not, it doesn't flip as well, but it certainly flips quite well like that. You can try that. Anyway, let's go to the drill. It's full of these elephant footprints here. I, got a, I think that's a 10 foot leader. Okay, so I'm just going to lift, lift the leader off the water to the fly. That's my pickup. And you'll notice this is going to be, a, this is, the other point about this is this is a variable pickup. We're not picking up to 10 o'clock. We're picking up till we lift the fly. And I'm going to pick up this movement predominantly from the shoulder. I like to get the shoulder into play. So I think about lifting the shoulder up to the fly. I'm here. I've got my back target. I'm going to ring the bell. Ding. I'm cast it back. I have to be careful. I had something falling around. So I ring the bell. Ding. I'm back. Okay. I'm going to add six feet of line on this and repeat. Okay. Now, because there's a bit more line, this lift is going to be longer. Okay, I'm just going to pause slightly then I'm going to flick the wrist, hit that bell. Two things you can think about here. One is, very important, the angle of that line 
the angle between the rod tip and the fly, which is the same as the angle makes, the angle of the line makes at the end of this pickup, if you were to directly follow that line back in a straight line, that would lead to your bell. So you can see on these short casts here, that puts the bell very high. Okay. And the second is, because, we, because, because we're casting straight back to the water, our starting position for the back cast, bang, is a finishing position for the forward cast. And then we lower the rod. So it's lift, hang on, let me get that right. So it's lift, rod tip touching the water. We're gonna lift, flip, flip back to the same position and then lower it down. So lift, flip, flip, down. I was just gonna pick a bit more line up. You should really do this in three foot increments and spend a long time on each. I just want to get through this because there's some other stuff I want to talk about. You can train this yourself. So I'm going to lift to the fly here, flick, flick, down. Okay, so lift, pause, flick, flick, down. Now, as I said at the beginning, ultimately we don't want the pause. This is just so that I, you've got this thing, your forearm stopping and your wrist flipping. Okay. Ultimately, we want that to be one smooth movement. What I don't want to see is that the wrist and the, and the forearm going at the same together. There's no then momentum transfer. Then you're driving the rod from the forearm instead of blocking the forearm and flipping the wrist. Okay. So it's lift, flick, flick, down. A bit more line. Here we go, lift to the fly, flick, flick, down. Lift. Down. So it's very high back cast, it's up in that tree. So to recap with that, start from the leader only. Lift from the shoulder, pause at the end of the lift. Look for the line angle between the rod tip and the fly. That goes to your bell. Ring the bell by ring it by casting the loop, forming the loop by just flipping flicking the wrist, bing. Pause until you actually, that fly hits the bell in your mind. You wanna finish at the starting position that you started your back cast. Then add three feet of line. Lift to the fly, pause slightly, flick, flick, down. Always remember the bell, add three feet of line. So it's here, lift, flick, flick, down. Add three feet of line. I don't know what that was. We won't talk about that. So it's lift to the fly, flick, flick, down. And then ultimately do the same drill, but don't pause at the end of the lift. So it's one movement. So I'm gonna lift here and go straight into a flick, flick. Number of key elements in that, we want to get that body movement, that momentum transfer, and um, always think about those targets. You've always got a target behind you, 180 degrees behind, and you want to pause until that fly hits the target. Okay, so, and, and it, so you get better timing if you're actually thinking about that. All right, hopefully that makes a lot more sense than the last one, getting blown around in the wind. Cheers. <laughs>